to. No, we get it. The central idea of the project that I think we all got really excited by was what if, as an audience member, you had the ability to be able to read the thoughts of the performers that you would be watching? And that became a really compelling conceit for us. Relax your face, it's showing on your face, your forehead is all screwed up. Relax your forehead, relax your... just breathe. We put together a workshop to discuss ways in which we can produce a play that has digital at its core but doesn't feel that it's led by a device or a screen. We were involved in the initial workshops with Sandpit and Google and worked over a few days to develop the concept. We kind of all felt fairly passionate about creating something that was quite intimate and that's where we've arrived at Ghost Toast and the Things Unsaid. sat down once he's had his tea. Should get that on. Is there enough milk? Oh, darn, I forgot. Toast! Watch out. All right, settle down, Morty. Settle down. Settle down, Morty. Jane, 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 My ring? Jane. What are you... Oh, my goodness, where is my ring? Where's my ring? I, I, I don't know. I just took it off to do the dishes. Oh, my God, it's gone. As an audience member, you're a ghost. So you wear this sheet and you are looking back on the life of the characters of Steve and Maud at three points in time in their relationship. We created a number of prototypes using the gyroscope and the accelerometer and trying to get that down to a really narrow focus while playing synced audio tracks simultaneously. It's very important that the technology is not more visible than the play. So we hide the phone behind them. So as they move around, so the phone moves around, and that means that you tune in to the character that you're looking at at that moment. From the get-go, it was very much about learning how to have a voice inside your head. And then I guess it's sort of almost like choreographing a dance after that. When you're doing a play and you have text, you play the subtext. So if something is going on in the character's head, you try and give an audience an inkling into what that might be. Uh, and in this piece, the audience is completely privy to the subtext. So, you know, it's a whole other ball game. I'm sorry. Where's that recipe for trifle? From the original book, not the new one. Where did it's I put that? been passed Even... down to me. And your why? Your why? You become. You disgust me. Not just money. beautiful little performance that really took me somewhere. It's something I've never quite experienced before. I'd love to go and see it again and uh, see the other side of it. It was a really amazing way to experience the close-up emotion <laughs> of actors. You can only get that just by standing right up next to them. It was amazing. It's been really rewarding to create a narrative that is quite complex on one level with something that we think has a lot of heart and we hope it's a really touching experience for people to look back at what happened to the lives of these characters. Technology has always been coming in and making important changes ever since the time of Shakespeare. And I think it's very interesting to see the areas in which we can use the technology that we know about, which is digital technology and information, to allow other theatre makers to understand what is possible. It is highly experimental, but what it does do is push the form and it starts to explore how art and tech and design and tech can come together and create new experiences that we haven't yet seen before.